here we go. Hey everyone, welcome back to Chaos, January 11th, Tuesday edition of the Chaos Community Meeting. Really happy to see everybody, I missed you all. I hope everyone had a good, nice, safe, healthy break. Um, I have, we had COVID running rampant through our family. I know a few others have as well. So hopefully everyone, if that happened to you, you made it through relatively unscathed, I hope. Um, yeah, it was not fun and it's still going on. But oh, well, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, let me share the minutes here just in case. Anybody's missing it. And I will share my screen. All right. Um, okay, cool. So if you haven't added your name, I think everybody has already because you all know the drill. But um, if anybody hasn't, feel free to drop it in there. Tell us what's going on, whatever is happening um, in your world would be great to know because we are interested in what's what's going on with you. Um, yeah, so let's just jump into the agenda. The first one is just hi. <laughs> That's not really a hi. meeting. I don't know. <laughs> hi. Does anybody have anything they want to share? Any like life news, anything since it's been a while, anything interesting that you want to share? Uh, my daughter is studying abroad this semester Ooh. in Barcelona. Oh, that's a good despite, place to be. Despite the pandemic. So that's kind of fun. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. I've heard of Barcelona. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a significant popular. role in the community. Yeah. Oh, that's Madrid. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Close. <laughs> I've got I've got one thing is that I had my best break or time off I guess in a very long time and it's because I picked up an MMO and just played it during the break. <laughs> uh, that 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 time was available then. Just played it during the break. Famous last words, Matt. Which one did you play? Uh, Final Fantasy fourteen. Cool. I made a little progress on building a 3D version of the Catan board game, but then it got too cold outside to spray the base uh, layer on for painting. So I still have a little bit more to do. Next I have Wednesday. so many questions, Garrett. Can you send me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, one second. I'll be right back. Wow, he's, so he's just just on it just right there it's like 3d Catan. like i'm intrigued immediately i just yeah. don't know how that's gonna work game wise but isn't Catan a variable board as well yeah you know so like if you 3d it it seems like it would be kind of permanent and unless complex. they're blocks yeah i was gonna say yeah. unless it's like little components and pieces I'm thinking like little like stackable stackable yeah. whole like I don't know. That's what I'm curious. Like, again, we'll, so many we'll questions. find out more. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned for Georg's big reveal. <laughs> uh, I hate to move on on the agenda because this next one, this should we have a name for ourselves was actually Georg's idea. So, oh, here he comes. All right, Georg, show us what you got. Oh, yes. Um, I was. Should I just um You can put an screen? image in the doc. Yes, let me do that. Uh, but let's talk about the names real quick. We have um, sometimes, you know, members of the chaos community or whatever, and we're talking to each other. And part of building an identity for ourselves is that we have some way of calling ourselves, giving ourselves a name. And I know we've talked about this in the past. We just haven't really landed on anything. And so that, that's what that is. And the first one, chaos, or in, in German, chaot, is someone who is chaotic. <laughs> that's oh. where that came from. It's German. I was looking to see if there is an English equivalent to chaot, and there's not. Yeah, the Germans have these great words, like schadenfreude and all these words that we don't have a word for. 
I like Kayats then. I also like Agents of Chaos because I think that's a reference to Get Smart. Yeah, I like those first two as well. <laughs> I liked Agents of Chaos too. But now that you're right, like Georg has given the backstory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I call my cats. Chaos? A Agents of Chaos. Ah. <laughs> well, in the sense of like we. All cats are regularly think about their contribution to entropy in our own household oh, so like God. them as a source or agent of chaos yeah in a, in a mathematical sense yeah so what do we just say what's up agents <laughs> <laughs> i can see us having to correct the spelling on k or correct people on the pronunciation of chaos frequently it's K Oats. K Oats. <laughs> Sounds like a cereal brand. <laughs> now, speaking of entropy, if you put triple the sugar of any other cereal in it, then it would be a source of entropy in the household. It's the children. So are we then, are we causing are we causing chaos or are we? Uh, creating order from chaos, I suppose. The, we should there should be some distinction in the name there, because I think I think half of these half of these uh, uh, imply that we're causing chaos. We could make it we could make it completely agnostic to the causing or controlling by just saying chaos club too. Though it kind of sounds like Mickey Mouse Club to me. We are we are, we are already the chaos community, so that one. Maybe do this is want, something that could oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, do we want to um, set up a little poll and send it to the mailing list, or how do we want to poll yeah, the community? I mean, that'd be fine. I mean, where will this even show up? <laughs> I guess internally was, just us. And my email signature <laughs> if we are the agents of chaos do we also get double o numbers yes yeah, sure sure Def definitely <laughs> on glasses you know like little hats i want money penny to give me one of those cool cars that's not money penny that's um never mind Q. 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 Yes, thank you. My bond references are stale. If it's internal only, then I, I do like German word because then we don't have to worry about people misinterpreting it. But okay. I like the idea of a poll, so I plus one that Elizabeth. Ooh. Those are rad. Georg. Thank you. So yeah, I, I'm done with all the water and I started on the brick. That's what you see there with the little trees and there is the place where they burn the clay into brick. And then you, you see there's a little cutout for the number. And on the water, yeah, there's the a cutout. industrial process, not just the mining. <laughs> Yeah, I'm having my fun with these. <laughs> Since we are an open source and we like to give credits, I can also share the Thingiverse where I got these from. Okay, you, your your paint job is looking way fancier than mine. <laughs> my, my, my husband's. Your yeah. paint job is way... You, I don't think he has as many colors as you've got there, so that's probably like part of it. <laughs> so, so will these be just laid laid out flat, so they're three dimensional in the sense that they're it's a game board that has three dimensions, but the actual play of the game is not three dimensional. Or will, <laughs> yeah, it's important the, questions. The pl the gameplay is the same as 
it was oh. with the original. It's okay. just 3D printed design okay. for game board. Yeah, does cool. yours have the little um, flat pieces? So we have the flat pieces so that um, the robber can always sit there on there. So I don't know if you can like. Yep, it does for yeah. the numbers because you need a place to put the numbers. Oh, okay, and right. The robber just sits on the number. Yep. Yeah. Just like that. But you're still, do you still, do you just have the little hookies to hook together? It's going to be held together by magnets. Oh, okay. Whoa, Whoa you got super fancy on yours. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, because we have to do some filing down to make them um, fit better together. Of course, this is like an old print too, so. This sounds like 20 week long Game of Catan every Tuesday kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, 20 weeks long every two. Also, sounds like the answer to my cats <clears throat> being problematic during Catan, where occasionally we, we've just had them like take out the whole board. And so <laughs> if it's magnetized together or like attached, then we don't have the possibility of a feline overlord dictator taking over the entire island of Catan, because that That's... has happened a few times. Well, my cats don't like the texture on them because there, there's a lot of pointy things. And so they have no interest mm. because I, I don't know if your cats are as texture driven as mine are, but you know, if there's sounds like they're more, it. sounds like they're more fearless than yours. It's just yeah. like to be in your business. And if that's your business, there will be there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. That was really interesting. Yeah, that was very cool. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. Very neat. York. that was awesome okay let's go on to number three so i'll do a poll and just send it to the mailing list and try to spread the word in slack and on twitter for people to vote i'll boom. figure out how to do that i'm not sure but we'll figure it out boom goes the dynamite that's it all right so um in the last meeting in the evolution working group we were talking about reviewing the metrics since that's kind of part of our um Part of our goals for 2022 is to um, implement this process by which we review old metrics, make sure that they're they word they're worded properly and are up to date with things that have come up since we have been developing metrics. So um, we, uh, Kevin Armstrong, Sean, um, we were looking at um, proposing a template for a metrics review that other working groups can follow. And here is the link which we can go to. So y'all can see it. And I'm going to let Kevin Armstrong, Sean talk about uh, how we came up with this and what, what the deal is. Kevin and Armstrong, Armstrong and Kevin. Uh, I can, I can talk unless Armstrong wants to. Okay. I will go. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, uh, so there, there are, uh, uh, this checklist was created uh, based on our the normal review process. So the content quality and technical requirements are part of the checklist for the normal review. Uh, so some of the some of the considerations that we had when we created this checklist are the three uh, three new items that we want to add to the metrics, and these three new items are based on uh, conversations that we've been having in the community meeting. Uh, and those three things are adding the data statement. Uh, which I believe, uh, so it's, it's been a couple months, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the, the data statement was going to be a pointer at the top of the implementation section, which would basically go to a document that I, I think uh, Lucas was going to take the lead on, and possibly Sophia, uh, about uh, some of the uh, the bad things that can happen with uh, using these metrics in regards to privacy. Uh, and then the, the second thing, and this, this is something we've been talking about uh, a little bit uh, over the past year, was kind of knowing, knowing when these metrics need to be reviewed and adding some sort of notation onto these metrics uh, on when they were last reviewed. And I, I saw there was a, a comment in there about what, how we, how would we, how we would determine the date. Uh, and I think the, the question was about would it, would it coincide with a commit? 
and honestly, I think that would be, I think that's a probably a, a good number to use. Just uh, if a commit is made to the document, then add the add that commit date to the document as well. Uh, and then the third bit we've been talking about is uh, and uh, known synonyms to the metric. Uh, we haven't talked about a placement for that yet, but I was kind of thinking that uh, known synonyms might be a good uh, little tag right underneath the right underneath the questions. So in the future, we could possibly scrape these documents and the known synonyms to help create some sort of uh, 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 I forget what the, uh, we've been talking about creating a, uh, a glossary. So we, we could actually, if we put the known synonyms in these documents, we could actually just scrape these documents to create the glossary in the future, uh, which would uh, save us uh, a ton of oversight uh, and, uh, and reduce some of the uh, repetition and redundancy uh, that we've talked about as well. Uh, so the, oh, go ahead. Can I ask clarification there? Um, so for synonym, synonyms, would you want to also include variations too? Like, I think there's going to be a little bit of nuance there in terms of like, are these just alternative names? Like, I don't know if you've seen the, the move away from trying to call it the bus factor to the velociraptor factor. I don't know. There's something like Velo that. <laughs> really? Velociraptor <laughs> factor? The, the sustain event report that came out a couple of months ago, a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, but just like, it's like that's sort of an, an alternative name versus like a slightly different permutation of a very similar metric. Um, and I didn't know if, like, I, I think that might get a little confusing if it's like, it's a cinnamon, but it's actually just a very slightly different measurement point either. Like I, I think, I think, yeah, if, if it's a different measurement point, I don't think we should include it. Okay, so uh, I think it should just be, means. yeah. So in the, in the example of a, a change request, for example, the synonyms for change request would be, well, the first one would be pull request, right? Uh, and then there, I think there are probably two or three request. Merge yeah. request is another one. Uh, but I, I think we, for now, we just start with the really obvious ones. That peop that are would cause confusion. I don't know that uh, Velociraptor uh, would cause confusion for bus factor. However, I do know that bus factor also goes by uh, truck factor, I believe. Elevator factor too. Elevator factor. <laughs> yeah. Elevator. Elevator. Oh, I've heard both. Uh, so if, if there's a if there's a distinction in the way that they're they're. Uh, they're defined if they're if they're looking at slightly different things. I don't think we should uh, we should use them. I think the, the goal here is to reduce confusion, not to cause more confusion. Okay, I think that sounds right. I have many images of being <laughs> hit by a bus, being eaten by a dinosaur, and I'm not sure about what the elevator <laughs> death is. It like falling down a shaft, or is it being in the elevator and then it breaks? It's Bruce Willis strapping C4 to an office chair and throwing it down. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't like, I don't think we should I don't think we should force the issue. I think it should just be the like these are the ones that we really know and let's let's not dig too deep to come up with uh, alternate names. <laughs> I've heard lottery factor. <clears throat> that image sitting on the beach with a drink is much more pleasant. There you go. <laughs> I just have one more circus factor. The you only the reason you're allowed to quit is if you die. <laughs> <laughs> so, is that the no mafia factor? Wow. <laughs> That's rough. That's rough. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Should we have a separate item also for inclusive naming? I know there's an initiative out there for that. I don't know a lot about it, but I know that um, there are some things that we could make a little more clear or inclusive in the metric wording itself. I think yeah, I think inclusive naming is is definitely something we can we can add to the uh, add to this list. I think that's uh, uh, yeah for sure. I, I think that would go in the content quality yeah. section. Yes. Uh, so, uh, and I'm I'm perfectly happy adding it right now. Uh, if if that's okay with everyone else, and uh, and I would I would say we should probably include discussions of inclusive naming in the full review list as well, which 
perhaps this this list will modify. Uh, perhaps this list that we're using here we, we can use to modify the uh, the full review. Uh, And I did just, uh, I just added that under in the content quality underneath the uh, DEI uses for the metric, so. Thank you. So, I mean, obviously the, obviously the working groups are kind of, they can kind of decide how they want to do their, their metrics reviews, uh, but the evolution working group we we kind of wanted to outline the process. I mean, it's a, uh, I'd say so, it's a descriptive more than prescriptive. Like, I don't think we need every working group to do exactly the same thing, but we thought that since we took the time to think it through, we would share it so that other working groups didn't have to independently do the same work. I will the for those first three things that we talked about. However, we do want to probably continue that discussion in a metrics template edit. So those those three things are things that we have been discussing as a group, uh, and they probably do need to be moved into the metrics template. I think they can live in both places though, right? Because you're going to be looking back and you're going to be looking forward. Yes. Yeah. They they can they can definitely live in this. Okay. However, yeah. they they do those three things do need to live in the metrics template as well. Uh, if if the community is in favor of those three things. And and from past discussions, I believe the community is in favor of of making these edits to the the template. But uh, we may have to all reach back into our memory to uh, how, how long ago was the, the last meeting. So. Do we have a volunteer that will take an action item to, to make that happen? Uh, would, would Lucas or Sophia be able to talk about that that first bit because I, I don't remember all of the specifics of the of the data statement. Uh, was there a document that was created or were there are there notes somewhere about what that was going to look like? Um, what do you think Sophia do you want to Lucas, I remember you started something. Yeah. You looked at it and then I think it kind of end of year stuff consumed it and I haven't looked at it since then. So yeah. But I do feel like you started something. So the thing that I wrote was, it was basically notes on uh, the state of the conversation after Seattle. Uh, and, um, and then um, you did some writing that I thought was really good and should be pulled in. And then um, or maybe an interview, I forget. Uh, oh, you did a talk. Uh, and um, and then um, we talked about privacy in the Tuesday call, uh, and um, and I suggested considering the DEI uh, group as a home for privacy uh, in the sense that um, uh, uh, primarily impacted people. Um, primary impacts, I think, have a lot to do with women in open source uh, getting unwanted attention. Um, and, and then we had the conversation about, you know, booting it up and writing this thing and where to put it. And I think the um, open question was who was going to work on it? Like, what's our, what's our birds of feather group? By the way, if you if you scroll down to page seventeen of our chaos weekly meetings, I think that's where the uh, page seventeen <clears throat> uh, privacy metric and thinking about privacy when developing metrics. That's where that came up. Mm. 
Um, I guess maybe the first thing is to create the working group or the BOF, whatever it's going to be, the interest group. Um, I wonder who, in addition to Sophia and myself, um, would want to engage. Not necessary, just an opportunity. I'm, I'm happy to be part yeah. of that discussion. Okay. Um, so, Sophia and Kevin, what should we do next? I think there was there was someone else that was that was volunteering as well. I'm sorry. I think I may have talk, been talking over them. It was just it was me, Matt. <laughs> okay. oh, to me, this seems like something that could kind of be worked on asynchronously. Could it not with just the four of us? If we had a Google Doc or something. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. There is the thing that Elizabeth was showing, like that first pass on privacy guidance. Mm -hmm. This. And then like we could put that into a Google Doc and work from there. My, I mean, my, my thoughts on such a statement are, and we've had this discussion before that we're not going to get down into the to the real like thorny details of a lot of this stuff. It's really just to raise awareness that there are things yeah. to think about when using these metrics. And we just we can't provide guidance, and we know that obviously. And so it's just finding that balance spot between you know make sure you think about these things. And um, I think there there are. Uh... There are other groups that have created some nice documents on this. So if, if we're not, uh, perhaps we can we can identify a few documents that we can kind of use as the uh, the exemplars that we can kind of point to, uh, so we don't have to completely do all of the work ourselves. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree, Kevin. I think there's a lot we can point to. Like, I'm just thinking. I know, like. This has their own sort of PII level designations, and most of those don't apply in these settings. But I guess we would focus on the ones that do, and then sort of create our own gradation, um, or suggest a gradation. But I don't, I don't. Again, I don't want to be too prescriptive because I agree it's more about awareness. Mm -hmm. um, and I think <laughs> I did give another talk on it since this happened. Um, that was just more about. There's two levels of it. There's the actual data and the sensitivity of the data as an individual datum. And then there's the impact of amassing lots of data about a person. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you start bringing additional sources, then you have additional context around that person. So even if any one individual thing is only revealing what they have provided, there's still sort of this, if you're amassing profiles about people given their public setting, like that's typically when companies that are doing this have to explicitly state that they're doing this. And in, in our case, we don't have any sort of regulatory mandate to do so. So it's more of a, a call to awareness that we you don't have, you're not subject to the same types of regulations, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be conscientious of them. I think, um, that, um, I think that doing that awareness document um, sort of fulfills the mandate of open source in a way, in the sense that it is, um, it's optional for people who want to engage, but it's valuable legwork uh, that we would save others from doing, like we'd go and create a useful resource for the community as a whole. I like Salona's example. <laughs> Um, I was thinking social media is part of it. It's more just more cross platform profile aggregation too. So it's not just one social platform, but maybe multiple social platforms. Cool. Oh, by the way, just a, just a note, uh, the operations team, I think at one, the, according to our previous weekly meetings notes, the operations team was going to be the the, the group that was going to uh, work on the, the data privacy bit. Well, if that's the case, let me ping Yash and Ritik, because they were the ones that, because this is, 
the operations team for people who aren't kind of aware is kind of a group of uh, folks that monitor things that have an impact across the community, such as this, you know, like we were, it was also, there were the guys, Yash and Ritik were the two that worked on the translations process, obviously having an impact across the community. And so I can ping them as well. I don't know if they're on the call hmm. or not. So, so we haven't, and we haven't had a, we haven't had an operations team meeting yet. Uh, I think we were going to wait to the yeah. wait until the new year to yeah. to get that together. And I know there were there are other people that have expressed interest in being part of that team as well. Uh, I think oh, we have we even have a Slack channel for it. So actually, yeah. And should we make a Slack channel for this, or do we want to stick in a Google Doc? I, we have a Slack channel called Operations Team. Oh yeah. Oh sorry, I meant uh, privacy then. Unless we want it to be consumed by the operations team, in which case we just should join that. Mm. Well, I'm dropping something in the Slack channel at the moment. <laughs> um, to Salona's point about um, the details of national um regulation uh like germany um it seems to me that there's a natural offshoot of this which is a research paper that one of the academics might want to consider like part of this is open source but part of it is more you know a white paper for research and so we might want to draw a line between this Uh, regarding the uh, regarding the checklist for these metrics reviews, though the 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 first thing we would need for the uh, the edit would actually be just a a one to two sentence uh, one to two sentences of text that would point to this document that we're creating, uh, and it would it would basically act as a uh, kind of a a data disclaimer, right? Yeah, and I mean, I, it's always going to be a disclaimer, oh. especially if because we don't want to be too prescriptive as to regional requirements. We want to call out that there are some, but not again. We don't want to get ourselves into any sort of sticky recommendations piece. I thought we had. I thought we had actually already written that. I thought uh, in one of these meetings, I thought we had written it. I think I thought Lucas had. Uh, uh, We've written a few provided things. Provided us with a, a like a two line sentence that basically says. Yeah. Uh, we did write that. Now, where was it? <laughs> <laughs> the dangers of going away for a month. <laughs> yeah. I do recall that, Kevin. I do remember that we we basically wrote a disclaimer statement. Yeah, it was base. It was basically the the first sentence was basically like, "Hey, working with data. Working with data. Sometimes there are issues. If you're interested in knowing more about this." go to this document. It was something like that. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Uh, I will, um, I'll paste it in. It's on a different computer than the one I'm on Zoom. Can you, can you just put it in that doc, Lucas? Uh, okay. That's what I'll do. Yeah. That Google doc. So is that already in the metrics template or does that need to be added? It's not in the metrics template. It needs to be added to the metrics template. Okay. So we do need uh, someone to take an action item to add these three things to the metrics template still, right? 
it sounds like we, we did have a statement that would go in all of them. It's just more the document that the statement would link to is what's still being developed. Mm. So, so I, I would I would take that action item, by the way. It's Kevin. Yes, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, Sophie. I apologize. No, I'm just I was just clarifying what the action item was in terms of like what because I'm assuming we're not going to have the document ready for you to link to yet, but probably not. <laughs> um, just to, before we close that out, so that for next steps for folks that want to work on it, are we going to connect on Slack and figure out either a cadence, a document, or a meeting that should follow to get this moving? Yeah. We probably, I would suggest maybe if an initial ad hoc meeting just to get it moving. I think so. Just see like, what kind of routine, yeah. yeah. Well, I think once we have the, a starting place, then we can work on it asynchronously. So do we just want a, an operations team meeting? Is that the, should we just set the first operations team meeting and, and top of the agenda privacy document? I'm fine with that. Yeah, that works. Can I set it up in Slack just so Ritik and Yash see and other people who have expressed interest can chime in as well? That like sounds right. Yeah. Way. Yeah. Yeah. That way, asynchronous participation is enabled that way, right? Okay, we have eight minutes left and we have a couple other things on our agenda. So are we cool to move forward? Any final thoughts on this stuff? All right, let's go to number four then. Um, much new interest from new folks. If you have not been paying attention in Slack, um, we have had quite a few people jumping in just to say hi and wanting to join and, and reach out. So um, not sure who put this on here, but. I did, it just like the, it's just so, I think it's just so important for us to find a way for anybody who expresses interest to connect with the project, whatever that connection might be. So I, I just, I mean, I think, we need to be really deliberate about kind of keeping track who has expressed interest, you know, make reaching out again if, if if there's something that we think they could help with or participate with. I just I don't know, just something we it's just great. It was really great over the holidays. I mean, there were quite a few people had, who had expressed interest and I just think we need to be really deliberate and making sure people feel welcome and making sure that they feel like they have an opportunity to contribute to the project. And also like learn from from folks too as as how they're coming to the project. Most seem to be coming via Slack. And you know like how we point people certain ways and if that if those ways are working. I think we can learn from this as well. Would it be helpful if I sent them the form or because um, we usually point people to this meeting, honestly, is like usually the place. But if you, you know, again, if they can't attend the meeting, um, they're kind of floating out there. But on the on the other flip side of that, uh, you know, it's hard to point someone to something specific if they have no idea who we are, or what we do or, you know, like we don't really have like generic stuff for people. So usually like I would prefer to onboard people by having them kind of attend meetings or like review stuff and look and see like what would be of interest to them instead of just like, here's an issue, go fix it. You know? So I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. I think this may be uh, like a part of the bigger picture of improving the onboarding process of making, maybe making it easier for them to understand who we are and feel connected earlier on than, than these meetings. I don't know. That sounds great. I mean, yeah, I agree. I, yeah, I think that sounds great. So one of the things that we've been doing for our platform is going in and for the getting started, we're trying to identify the types of people that come in and what they might possibly want to do. And so we were talking, of course, my funding's been cut in half, but we were talking about a choose your own adventure style thing. 
where you basically come in and you're like, hey, you know, who are you? What's some of the stuff that you like to do? And then so they're going, oh, if you like to do these things, then maybe here, maybe there, maybe over here, you know, things of that nature to kind of like um, pull it on down because so much is going on that it's really hard sometimes to like for people to figure out where it is that they actually want to go. Um, also the open office hours is good because then people can come in and like chat around a little bit and then you can talk with them and go, oh, okay, then you probably want to go over here or you probably want to go do that or things of that nature is another thing that we've been doing. So we've kind of been doing a little bit of the marketing personas style thing for figuring that out. So that way on the getting started on the website, at least we can think about how we're going to send people off somewhere. So that way they, they kind of know where to go, because I think there's certain people who, you know, they do want to work on the metrics or they do want to work on the, or even sometimes there's people who just want to like help run meetings because they really don't know what to do yet. And they're not very technical and they're like, oh, I can figure out how to do that for you. And so um, that's what we're trying to do on our stuff now is personas for the volunteers. I like that a lot. Um, I was also thinking, I liked Elizabeth's point on metric reviews being a way that's like an easy way to just start to participate without feeling like you have to do anything or have to know anything. You can just pick the metrics that you're most interested in or that you think are most relevant to you and just review what you're working on. And that gives folks a sense of the output of the project as well as a chance to be a part of the review process early on. But I guess those are, those are not constant. So there's more of a like, if they happen to join right before a review period, that's more or less beneficial. Um, so I think for a general plan, I like that persona approach just because I think there is a bit of a, we just don't know enough about people and where their interests and backgrounds are to direct them properly in Slack. I think we need to know a little bit more about them. And so trying to find a way to learn about that in a way that's not obtrusive or invasive. So I, uh, I like that a lot too. I, I like the idea of the, that kind of choose your own adventure format. Uh, Matt, Matt can too had created that nice kind of getting started blog. And I was, I've been, I've been contemplating, uh, taking that blog and turning it into a, a permanent page on the website. And, uh, after hearing you talk, I'm, I'm wondering if we could take that blog and kind of turn it into a choose your own adventure page, uh, and use that as our getting started. Uh, and. I wonder if there's there's any uh, any volunteers to help me with that. Glad to help with that. I'm glad to move that forward. I'd even suggested one of the things that um, we've been talking about on my team was creating an image where you know you're like da 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 oh I'm here and then da 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 you know and then people could click on the image and it would sit there and blow it up and then it would get all the way down until it like clicks and takes them somewhere, um, kind of thing. Um, I'm it's not very fluid of a design um, in that it will break, but uh, kind of kind of okay for some of our default stuff because you know we've got the advisory group, so we've got the subgroups, we've got you know you know also just even doing your own project yourself and all of that kind of stuff. So that's why we were looking at that kind of structure. Well, so, if I um, for, oh sorry, go ahead, Elizabeth. No, I was just going to wrap it up because we're kind of running out of time, but go. Oh, go. yeah. I wanted to catch us before we wrapped up and share some positive information about the onboarding stuff because um, we've made great strides in the chaos community about moving this forward. I know I'm talking, I'm preaching to the choir here, but like I'm just really happy with how it's going and like that we found some, we've hit some veins already about uh, what people, how people want to join the project. And then we're getting to the point where we're like, how do we take all these new people coming in and what do we do? And I think that's a great place to be. And it's, it's indicative that we really care. And I'm just happy about that. Awesome. Um, we're out of time, but I see there's one more quick announcement. Videos from ChaosCon are now online on the Chaos 2. So um, thanking Georg for that, I think. Since I think he was the one responsible. I, I was only the one who cut the pieces into individual videos and uploaded them. The video creation was Sean and Matt, and I don't know who all, all was involved in that. That is excellent news, um, and we will we'll put that on uh, 
in the newsletter and maybe we'll maybe we'll tweet about that as well and put it on the mailing list. So thank you to everyone who worked on that. And Thanks we everyone. are out of time. So uh, we'll wrap it up. We'll see everybody next week. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your week, everybody. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.